It's time to put the developer to work. In line 10, complete the do work function and tell the developer to build me an app. So, quick recap, we have our boss delegate with a do work function. We have a class called boss and the boss has a delegate property with a optional boss delegate. We also have a developer class which conforms to the boss delegate. And that's why it implements the do work function. We now have an instance of a boss and an instance of the developer. The boss delegate equals the developer and that's how he can send work to the developer. So now the boss.delegate can say do work. It can access this function because the delegate conforms. The delegate equals the developer. So that's how we gain access to the do work function of the developer, even though we are the boss. So the boss, the delegator can delegate work to the developer and now we say job build me an app so when we run this you can see that it will print okay boss because we're calling the do work function of the developer and the developer just says, okay, boss, in this example, anytime you call the do work function of the developer. By using delegation, the boss can access the do, the do work function of the developer. That's the key here with delegates and delegation. The boss class does not have a do work function, but by having a delegate property that conforms, that is of type boss delegate, we can assign that delegate property to the developer and then have the developer do the actual work. And that's how we access this. Again, while this was confusing at first, if you break it down, it starts to make sense. If it doesn't make sense the first time, I strongly urge you to, to go back to step one and walk through these examples again until it starts to click. Because delegation is everywhere in Swift and in iOS and the, the sooner you become comfortable with the concept, the sooner a lot of the development that is required and goes into developing apps is going to start making sense.